let me start the 38th session of secrets of spirituality as uh, we were discussing yesterday the five sheaths of the human body will have five different dimensions of time or three different dimensions of time to be precise or so to say the human beings and the ghost will have almost the same dimension of time the ancestors will have a increased span of existence and the angels will have still more increased span of existence and the saints when they are one with the god they are basically beyond time or they are timeless now it is the human beings only who will turn into ghosts if they are evil if they are wicked that is one possibility another possibility is if there is a sudden physical death maybe due to suicide or maybe due to murder or maybe due to any fatal accident there are chances that they will also remain in their etheric body for some time and if they are noble when they were living then there are chances that the etheric body will get disintegrated faster and with the age normally with the age means after the general aging of the physical body when the physical death happens within 12 days this particular etheric body gets disintegrated and then the person will be in the domain of ancestor so ancestors can keep in contact with their family members with or without the family members knowing so ancestors will have the attachment on their families but the evil or wicked or selfish people when they leave their physical body when they remain as ghosts they will not have any attachment with the any other people as such because even while they were living also they did not have any compassion or love towards the other fellow beings right that is the very reason why they remain as ghosts as i again keep telling lessons are repeated until lessons are learned each one of us has to keep on learning these lessons about how do we keep our physical body pure how do we keep our mental body pure and how do we have connection with the pure spiritual body spiritual body is always pure there is no need to purify the spiritual body but it is the physical and mental bodies which are the barriers for our spiritual connection now if the evolved beings remain as angels for example like mahatar baba ji or like many other angels i should tell you that i am in touch with one particular person called sadhana mallya who stays at manipal and she performs regular channeling sessions for a particular angel and for that angel the name being referred is called satya devata means the angel which speaks the truth any of you or all of you can go and witness it and you can actually verify you can test in any any which way you want to test i am not going to tell lot of details about that particular phenomenon now in this online session if you people are interested in the practical sessions let me tell more details about the same but anybody and everybody can be a part of that session you can verify whether it is a real angelic channeling or not 
she is a clairvoyant and she has a telepathic ability and she has an ability of technical astrology during those seances or during those channeling sessions otherwise she is a normal lady as such and when these sessions are happening her eyes remain closed still she is able to see people and even though she is sitting in a particular room she will be able to connect herself or the angel which is using her physical body is able to recall the natural memory as i have been telling you the individual memory if it is transferred into natural memory that will get into the cycle of karma so this angel called satya devata has the ability of clairvoyance means whatever has happened in the past can be easily seen by her not with the physical eyes but with the connection to the natural memory now this is a proof that karma gets stored in nature and as i have been telling you you can verify this phenomenon in any which way you want to verify but with the certain amount of humility people should have inquisitiveness people should have querying nature when trying to understand but if it crosses the limit then there can be friction there can be problems so my only word of caution is that whenever you deal with such phenomenon you should be highly cautious in the sense you are witnessing a power which is beyond you or above you or you are witnessing a channeling phenomenon which is not easily understandable to your rational mind if you have to understand you have to understand the dimensions which are beyond the physical dimensions as long as that does not happen many things in nature are remaining mysterious if they remain mysterious that itself is better for the normal people but as i am telling the sacred things now i thought let me relate that also to you i have been in touch with her since last 10 years and i have sent many of my students there even i have gone there many times and each time when somebody goes there and comes back i am going to ask what was the communication there and every now and then i keep listening to wonderful things now after i came in contact with her initially i did not believe all these things later on when i experienced on my own and then i tried to understand this phenomenon in a different way then i remembered that i had read a book called sun signs and star signs written by linda goodman and in the book star signs linda goodman had told about her own life history where she has told that she is also in touch with the high level spirit or high level angel later on when i read the book written by barbara and brennan called hands of light and light emerging in the book light emerging even barbara and brennan relates to her own experience and i don't exactly recall now whether it was barbara and brennan or whether it was linda goodman one of them mentioned the name of the angel as heon and the angel itself or angel himself because in the previous human existence the angel was male so angel himself told that his name is heon when i read those books i could not really understand the phenomenon but when i came in touch with the sadhana malya i keep calling her as sadhana madam even though she is a normal down to earth lady 
in the channeling session it is something different that is happening something paranormal that is happening there and there the angel has guided to many people in its own way even to me once i had gone to a particular session casually i used to go casually i used to call sadhana madam and if there was a session i used to go in the morning and uh, one day when i went there i was sitting inside she was having her eyes closed and she casually asked me how is your health i said my health is all right then she said no your health is not all right i said no my health is really all right she said you will have a pain near your right side abdomen right i said yes in fact i used to have such pain since last 10 15 years and whenever i used to consume paneer items or cheese items or maida items like parotta kulcha any punjabi item that pain used to increase it used to remain for 2 to 3 days but it was a bearable pain and i uh, i used to understand that because of this heavy food my digestion is getting affected and then i used to take a precaution of avoiding such food items to some extent even though i was very much fond of consuming paneer items and punjabi kulcha or punjabi parotta roti still i used to be cautious because of the pain and i never went for any diagnosis because if i go for diagnosis i know that they will say something like gall bladder expansion or liver expansion or fatty liver something like that and then uh, they will uh, try to do something with this physical body in their own way i did not want to have that risk at all why should i go for a diagnosis where they will say that something is wrong with my liver or something is wrong with my gall bladder and why should i be suffering later on for their therapy instead i had thought in my own way let me take care of my health by avoiding such foods but when i was sitting in front of sadhana madam when she was performing this channeling session she told that pain because of that pain you have been suffering right i said yes once in a while that pain comes and i take my own precaution in avoiding such heavy foods then she told it is not a disease it is only a heat bubble you don't have to worry when you go back to bengaluru you just take some carom seeds and some jeera and one more item she told i don't recall maybe methi or some other item i don't recall now she told these three items crush them make it a powder and consume this one teaspoon of powder along with honey before breakfast and you will become all right my dear listeners please remember she is keeping her eyes closed and i am sitting in front of her she is able to see my health issue which is internal to my body that is what is called as clairvoyance and if you sit in front of her you don't have to say something at that time whatever you think that also she will understand at that time and whatever you think she will tell you whatever you have been thinking or whatever question is there inside your mind at times she will find out the question on her own and she will tell the answer for that question also in fact i had not gone there to tell about my health issue i had ignored this particular health issue but she only told me about this health issue then when i came back to bangalore i did exactly what she told me i had that mixture prepared and i consumed it and within one week my pain was gone within one week and i had suffered because of this pain since last 10 15 years within one week this pain was gone just by consuming that cumin seeds and carom seeds mixture along with the honey before the breakfast 
what she had told she had told it is a heat bubble it will go away and that way healing happened inside without any other therapy and later on i kept on consuming paneer items even punjabi items and even pizza also and i had no such troubles afterwards that is what i call as clairvoyance and you people also can test it in any which way you want to test but with humility with some deeper divine respect now in this way angels can guide the mortal human beings in their own way in whatever way if there is upliftment happening for the normal human life angel is happy human is happy so after i came in contact with the sadhana mand madam i kept on studying about these paranormal phenomenon more and more even though i had read about them earlier in the books i was not able to understand that particular uh, phenomenon but now i am witnessing the regular phenomenon so recently about 3 or 4 years before or 5 years before i don't exactly recall there was a spiritual conference held at pyramid valley in bangalore i attended for particular day one particular day i registered for the workshop and i attended one lady had come there called margaret mcelroy and she was a resident of australia she was regularly visiting to usa also she was slightly handicapped but she was telling about her life story in that workshop and she had kept her own biographical books there for sale and she was mentioning about her channeling ability i listened to her then i purchased her life story books and later on i read all the books and in the book she says that she has been channeling the angel since many years and now she is channeling the third angel she was earlier channeling one particular angel later on the second angel came in touch with her now she is channeling the third angel which means the angelic existences are looking for proper human beings to be used as channels so that even angels want to be in touch with the human beings so when i read the margaret mcelroy's life history she is now also there you can also search for her name in the google margaret mcelroy clairvoyant and you can listen to her youtube videos as well if she comes to bengaluru you can meet her as well if you want to have more proofs or else any time you can go to manipal it is overnight journey you can be part of that session and you can witness through your own eyes that is up to you so i had enough proofs now that existences exist beyond the human physical plane whether it is a ghost whether it is an ancestor whether it is an angel but i give more regards to the state of saint the state of adept the state of spiritual masters the state of rishis where they are in direct contact with god they are in touch with god and they will have intuitional abilities of course angel will have the ability of clairvoyance ancestor will have the ability of appearing in dreams but saint will have the ability of direct communion with god and human beings can directly raise themselves to the state of saint through the practice of ashtanga yoga or through the study of vedanta otherwise all the normal evil wicked selfish human beings will end up becoming ghosts all the other normal polite 
gentle human beings will end up becoming ancestors and always the ancestors will take a rebirth whenever the astral body gets aged astral body will get aged after a few centuries even the angel psychic body also gets aged maybe after a few millenniums you don't know because as i've been telling you one month in the earth plane is equal to one day for the ancestors one year in the earth plane is equal to one day for the angels if i have to repeat it om adya brahmane dvitiya parardhe shweta varaha kalpe vaivasvatamanvantare ashta vimshati tame kalavyuge prathama pade that is how they measure time and this particular mantra in almost all hindu ceremonies the priest will be chanting this particular mantra for sankalpa sankalpa means resolution before starting any sacred ritual they chant this particular mantra whether the priest understands it or not is a different case but whenever they say that you should remember om adya brahmane shweta varaha kalpe that means from the time of brahma to the kalpa to the manvantara to the yuga and to the particular year a particular month a particular day that is how they mention the time and that is already mentioned in the surya siddhanta that one year for us is equal to one day for the angel one month for us is equal to one day for the ancestors but all the human beings have the ability to elevate themselves up to the stage of saint or to be in direct communion with the god if they wish to be so with this revision let me proceed to my next slide you don't have a soul you are a soul you have a body a very beautiful sentence people think we have a soul we have atma wrong you don't have atma you are atman atati sarvam vyapnoti iti atma you don't have a soul you are a soul basically you are divine basically you are spiritual basically you are part of god basically god only became life you are part of god so god has a body you have a body god has become bodies right god has become udvijja svedaja andaja jarayuja manuja so you don't have a soul you are a soul you have a body for using a body you have a mind you are a soul now if people understand that this is the way to live and in what way they make mistakes while they live how do they detoxify what is the way to detoxify the five koshas or the five sheets when we have five bodies how can we keep all these five bodies fit now there are two methods one is by oneself one is by the others if you are capable of detoxifying yourself by yourself then the physical body or the annamaya kosha can be detoxified by means of the physical control or yoga asana the pranamaya kosha or the etheric body can be detoxified by means of the energetic control or pranayama the manomaya kosha or the astral body can be detoxified by means of the sensory control or pratyahara 
Now the Vijnanamaya Kosha or the psychic body can be detoxified by means of the internal concentration that is called Dharana. And finally the Anandamaya Kosha or the blissful body or the spiritual body can be detoxified by means of total contemplation or Dhyana. This is by means of the process of Yoga. Now, those who are not capable of practicing yoga by themselves, for them, others will perform therapy that is called Chikitsa. Now, for the Annamaya Kosha or for the physical body, the therapy is body cleansing by means of a treatment called Pancha Karma. Vamana, Virechana, Basti, Nasya, Raktamokshana. Out of the five, whichever is suitable, that is going to be administered by a therapist to detoxify the physical body or Annamaya Kosha. Let me go back to the previous to previous slide to just to make you remember even the English terminologies which we use. Otherwise, there are heavy confusions in the usage of English terminologies. Many books use many types of wordings there. I have specifically chosen the five words. Let me show you again. I use these wordings. Physical body, etheric body, astral body, psychic body, causal body. Causal body because that is the cause for existence. Psychic body because psyche means intellect. Astral body means of the stars. Basically universal. Etheric body means of the ether or the electrostatic or electromagnetic body. And the etheric body is beyond the normal physical materials. And finally we have the physical body. So these are the five terminology which I use. Physical body, etheric body, astral body, psychic body and causal body. Let me go back to the present slide. Now through the practice of yoga, we can detoxify all these five bodies independently without depending on anybody else. But provided we learn these five methodologies effectively from the competent teachers or from the competent masters. Now coming to the chikitsa or the therapy, in Ayurveda we have panchakarma for the cleansing of the physical body. Now for the etheric body, there is this prana chikitsa or aura cleansing or pranic healing. In fact, pranic healing is nothing new. In our Hindu customs, there have been a method of using salt and using red chilies along with some smoke and along with some fire. There has been this practice of cleansing the aura with knowledge or without knowledge even in the rural areas even now they follow of course the urban people think they are well educated and they think that this is all blind faith or stupid custom it is not so whenever they take up a salt and move it around the body the salt can absorb the toxicity or salt can clear out the blockages that are in the pranamaya kosha or in the etheric body. The salt can actually remove the entanglements that are, that are there in the chakras. So, with knowledge or without knowledge, our older generation people were performing the aura cleansing in, the, in their own way. Now, that became a standard science by the effort of Master Chowa Koksui. And you can also learn this particular beautiful methodology called Pranic Healing or Prana Chikitsa. Or if you develop prana in your body, in your own way by the practice of pranayama, if you simply touch somebody or if you simply bless somebody without your own knowledge, energy moves from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration and automatically that way also healing happens. 
In fact, blessing is nothing but pranic healing only in one way. Or pranic healing is nothing but a special type of blessing only. So that is aura cleansing which others can do to a person. Now, if a person is unable to detoxify his own mind or her own mind, now others can work as a counsellor. Basically what is counselling? Santvana means whatever the person is unaware of about himself or herself that the therapist will be able to understand and the therapist will be, will be able to relate about what has gone wrong or what is going wrong, how it can be corrected at the thought level. If there is something wrong with the thought process of the individual, that will gradually lead to a physical ailment as well. Or uh, if there is something wrong with the thought process of an individual, that will gradually lead to a normal failure of the lifestyle as well or a failure of the normal achievements as well. In such a case, a counsellor can understand what is going wrong and a counsellor can perform a counselling session so that the person who is suffering can develop willpower or the person who is suffering can correct himself or herself by means of a positive attitude or by means of a learning attitude. Coming to the Vijnanamaya Kosha or the psychic body, the only way to correct the people's intellectual ignorance is by educating them into the domain of health, into the domain of life, into the domain of spirituality. That is called Vidya Pradana. How can you make a fool as an intelligent? Only one way. The fool must be ready to become intelligent. Now, if the fool is ready to become intelligent, gradually the person can be taught about life, taught about God, taught about health, taught about nature, taught about spirituality. If the person is ready to learn. Now, if you are unable to detoxify your own intellect, if you are unable to correct yourself, about what is wrong with your own intellect, then someone else has to be above you, to monitor you, to verify you, to correct you. In essence, it is basically the process of education. I am not mentioning the material education or the mundane education. I am mentioning the spiritual education. In the Gurukula system, initiation is into Brahma Vidya only. Education is about self-realization only, nothing else. So that is called Vidya Pradana. Next, finally, if you are unable to detoxify yourself by means of Dhyana, then you will have to take a spiritual initiation by a competent spiritual master that is called Diksha. For that purpose only, Upanayana was one of the samskara in the 16 samskaras where the Gayatri Mantras Diksha or spiritual initiation used to happen for a young person, maybe boy, maybe girl. It did not matter. The gender of the body was not a matter at that time. And that is how a young mind or an adolescent mind used to be initiated into spirituality by means of a Diksha. And as I have already mentioned earlier, there are other types of Diksha also called Sparsha Diksha, Chakshu Diksha, Manasa Diksha. So, you can detoxify yourself if you get into the path of Yoga. Or else, you can get detoxified by the others, either by the Ayurvedic Panchakarma therapy, or by the pranic healing therapy, pranachikitsa therapy, or by means of counseling or santvana, or by means of spiritual education or vidya pradana, or else getting yourself initiated into the spiritual path fully. 
that is called diksha but the point is you must be ready to detoxify yourself that is the first point otherwise law of karma will take its own course let me go to the next slide now let me go a little deeper into these three positions or three sthiti three states one is ghost one is ancestor one is angel now ghost for which in sanskrit we can call it as preta pra ita preta and for ancestor we will call pitru and for angel we will call devata now as you know the ghost is with the etheric body along with the other three bodies which is not which it is not aware of now the ancestor of pitru is with the astral body and the pitru is also not aware of the other two bodies that exist and the angel is in the psychic body and the angel is also not aware of the last body that exists because they are not aware of the causal body they have such existences the one who becomes aware of the causal body and one who remains with the causal body is a saint is a rishi now for the ghost the activity is the actions the ghost does not have an intellectual ability if it has an intellectual ability it will not become a ghost at all human being will not become a ghost at all if they have a enough logic about how to live whereas with the ancestors or the pitru it is mainly thoughts so they can have a thought transference when the other people are in the dreaming state in general you might have heard about some biographies of some people where in the dreaming state they have come in contact with the forefathers or uh, they have come in contact with the people who have departed from the physical body and in uh, many of such cases it is true as well because such communication can be verified and it can be documented as well so there is a thought transference from the pitru to the family members or to the friends but with the angels as they are in the psychic body it is basically decisions decisions to help human kind a decisions to reduce the sufferings so gradually angels when they have channeling sessions when they use the other human beings who can work as channels later on it is the physical body of the channel or the medium that is expressing the decisions of the angels now as far as memory is concerned the ghost or the preta will have its own memory it will not have any other memory as it is selfish wicked and evil for that matter so to say i do not say that all the ghosts are wicked but if they remain as a ghost then definitely they are wicked otherwise when people leave their physical body suddenly maybe by means of suicide or maybe by means of a fatal accident or maybe by means of murder their etheric body will be still intact and they remain like ghosts for some time until the etheric body gets dissolved but if the evil people start possessing the other human beings and keep on stealing the prana then i should say that they are evil that is why they remain as ghosts they are selfish that is why they remain in that way only and that itself is their karma or fate so ghosts will have their own memory mostly selfish people will have their own memory whereas the ancestors or pitrus will have their own memory as well as the memory of others that is why they are attached with the family members or they are attached with the 
human beings whom they were in touch with when they were with the physical body. Now with the angels, the angels will have own memory as well as the other's memory as well as that of the nature. As I told you, any individual memory gradually gets transferred into natural memory and that natural memory can be picked up by the angels that is one of the siddhis or accomplishments. Just like we talk about yoga, we also talk about siddhi. And some of these people when they have this ability in the when they are in the human body itself, they are called as siddhas. Clairvoyance is a siddhi. So angels can have this clairvoyance readily available with them because they are one with the nature. As I told you earlier, memory has three dimensions called individual memory, natural memory and divine memory. I had mentioned as individual ego, natural ego and divine ego. Ego is always associated with memory itself. Please remember again and again that memory is not just in the brain. Memory is there in nature in many different ways. Now, whatever is stored in nature as Sanchita Karma, I am going to talk about it later on, that can be recalled by an angel and the problem can be mentioned and the solution also can be advised by the angel because angel understands what was the cause for that issue and how it can be eradicated. So that way angels will have their own memory, they will have the memory of the others as well as they will have the memory of the nature itself. Now the manifestation is the ghost can be manifested even in the awakened state. It can possess somebody even in the awakened state. Whereas an ancestor will come into contact with the human being only in the dreaming state. The ancestors will not be able to reveal themselves in the awakened state because they are with the astral body, not with the etheric body. Now in general, angels will manifest themselves only in the sleeping state. In the sense, angels are with the psychic body, not even with the astral body. That means, let us say somebody is seriously channeling an angel, that particular channel will be almost in the sleeping state. Only the body will be utilized by the angel. For example, if Linda Goodman or Barbara Ann Brennan or Margaret McElroy, if they have been effectively channeling, then whatever they speak during channeling, they will not be remembering. That is the case with Sadhana Ram as well. Whatever she speaks inside the room, when she comes out, she will not be remembering. Sometimes whomever she sees inside the room with eyes closed, when she comes out, she will not be able to recognize the same person. Why? Because when the angel starts using the body of Sadhana Madam, later on, she is almost into the sleeping state. Her ego is not active because body is being utilized by the angel itself completely. Now people who want to lose their ego, only they can become channels. People who have ego, they will never be able to channel an angel. I hope you have already read that beautiful book called Laws of the Spirit World, where the two departed sons came in contact with the mother. And the two departed sons told her, how she can come in contact with them daily evening by taking a book and with the pen in the hand. I hope you have read that book. Now you can understand. If that lady 
is coming in contact with her own sons. She will be having almost an ego state. That is when the writing happens through her hand, but writing is done by the higher spirits. I am not saying that her two sons were angels, but I should say that her two sons were as ancestors, even though they were her sons when they were with the physical body, now they have elevated themselves to a astral plane or they are, they were in the astral world. Those who are not at read the book, you should read that book, Laws of the Spirit World. But you need not believe whatever is completely told in that book. You need not apply a logic also into that because there are a few things which need not be completely spiritually mentioned there. That book is a good book for anybody and everybody to read. But the complete spiritual concepts are not fully revealed there. The reason is neither the mother nor the two sons had a spiritual connection earlier. Okay. Even the sons had to have a spiritual education, only then they will be able to relate all these dimensions clearly. But that is not their limitation. As I have been telling you, lessons will be repeated until lessons are learnt. So, even the sons, when they are in the ancestral plane, someday they will have to take rebirth and learn about life and death once again very clearly. So, I do not say that they were at fault, but I also so that say that they were also not 100% right. I do not say that the two sons who departed and they were in communication with the mother, I do not say that they were saints, right? I do not say that they were in touch with God, right? So that way, even they have their own limitations. Otherwise, that book is a very beautiful book to understand the paranormal phenomenon. Now, lastly, communication wise, the ghost will communicate only by means of possession of the physical body. Whereas the ancestor will communicate by means of the thoughts, as I have already mentioned. And the angel will communicate by means of the intentions. Angel has an intention to utilize someone as a channel. Let me proceed further without digressing. Because if you keep on speaking about only these things, we will gradually digress into different uh, thought processes, which is not our intention here now. We are not going to study ghost also in detail. We are not going to study ancestor also in detail. We are not going to study angel also in detail. Okay. But we have to know some basics of all the three. That is where this discussion is being done. Our intention is self-realization, communion with the God. That is the basic intention of this discussion. Let me proceed. Now there are purification methodologies told by these two great people called Maharshi Patanjali and Adi Shankara. Now, as I have already told you, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya, there is one more kosha or the sheath called Brahmamaya and then there is one more kosha or sheath called Nirvanamaya. Nirvanamaya is the whole infinite universe itself. Okay. Now, earlier I mentioned about detoxification. How can there be purification? Again, the same methodology told by Patanjali called Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana. For the Brahmamaya Kosha, I am adding Samadhi. As I have told till now, it is Manushya, Preta, Pitra, Devata, Rishi. Now here, we should say Maharshi. Whoever 
reaches the samadhi state is a maharshi and if at all someone transcends further from the brahmamaya kosha to the nirvanamaya kosha then we should say he is a brahmarshi but i should tell you one particular important sentence my dear listeners only one person on this earth is fit to be called as brahmarshi that is veda vyasa if others call themselves as brahmarshi then we should ask them have you reached the state of brahman we should ask them if anybody reaches the state of brahman they will completely become egoless timeless spaceless there will not be the individual ego there now through god's grace only they should come back into the normal state so i keep mentioning this word that only veda vyasa can be called as a brahmarshi because he is the one who had written brahma sutra he is the one who had written the formula for god of course beyond veda vyasa even a vasishta is a brahmarshi even a vishwamitra is a brahmarshi but i am telling in the present context if anybody mentions himself or herself as brahmarshi we should laugh at them why can we compare them with veda vyasa can we compare them with vasishta can we compare them with vishwamitra they should give the answers for these questions any other person calls themselves as brahmarshi actually they should answer these questions that is why i am telling whoever reaches the brahmamaya kosha beyond beyond samadhi only he or she can be called as brahmarshi not anybody else that way now this is the method suggested by patanjali not suggested advised or taught by patanjali now along with the five koshas i have added the sixth kosha but i should stop here itself i should not talk more about the last two koshas i should not talk about brahmamaya kosha and nirvanamaya kosha in detail for the general public because highly sacred things they should be communicated only in private not to the general public so let me limit myself now coming to the methods prescribed by adi shankara except for the first one the first one he did not mention but i have simply put it that way for the annamaya kosha in the ayurveda there is abhyanga snana means the whole body can be smeared with the medicated oil and with the hot water bathing can be performed and because of the complete massage of the physical body by means of this medicated oil the total skin surface gets purified and because of the hot water bath blood circulation throughout the body increases and health results so that is the method later on i should change the color of this abhyanga because this is not told by adi shankara <laughs> okay adi shankara never bothered to talk about the physical body at all but he has told about the other four things viveka vairagya shat sampatti mumukshutva ahankara nasha what is viveka nitya anitya vastu viveka what is temporary what is permanent that should be understood by somebody that is called viveka if people do not understand what is temporary what is permanent that is called a viveka what is permanent only the soul is permanent self is permanent god is permanent all other things are impermanent whatever name you gain whatever fame you gain how much your money which you earn how much your flats you may buy how much your vehicles you may have how much how many ever acres of 
land you may have everything is temporary land will remain there you will not be there later on the house which you buy will remain there you will not remain there later on right that's a funny part now the cement will have a larger age concrete will have a larger age wood will have a larger age steel will have a larger age than the human body <laughs> But these humans think that they will live with that steel, with the concrete, with the cement, with the marble, with wood. They all will remain. The person will not remain. That is why Adi Shankara says, Nitya Anitya Vastu Viveka. What is temporary? What is permanent? What is transitory? What is absolute? That must be understood. If it is understood, then it is called Viveka. Otherwise, everything else is a Viveka. So the way of purifying the Pranamaya Kosha is by means of developing the knowledge of what is Viveka, what is eternal, what is transitory. Next, how to purify the mind? To purify the mind, you should develop something called Vairagya. What is Vairagya? Iha, Amutra, Phala, Bhoga, Viraga. As long as there is this selfishness, always there will be a counting of gain or loss. As long as there is an intention to have some personal benefit, as long as this selfishness is there, so long, the calculation will be there. As long as there is calculation in the mind, so long the mind is impure. For example, me and you people have been involved in this session since many months now, right? Many weeks have passed. Now today is the 38th session. If me and you have been fully involved in thinking about this one and a half hours discussion, what is the gain, what is the loss, what is the gain, what is the loss, what is the priority, how should I use this evening's time and is it worth to keep on listening for one and a half hours about all these things. Now, people will remain with their selfishness only. If they remain with their selfishness only, they will have always the calculation about what am I going to get by this. If they keep on calculating what am I going to get by this, then the calculative mind itself or the rational mind itself is going to be impure. Honestly, you will have to ask yourselves, have you gained something out of all these discussions? Or have you lost something out of all this time waste? I don't know. I'm just doing all these sessions because I feel happiness. I feel satisfaction whenever I express these things. My throat, my tongue, my brain, they're all meant to think about, meant to talk about, God only and nothing else. That way I consider myself fortunate. I do not calculate for any gain or for any loss for that matter. As long as people keep on calculating, they'll keep on remaining with the impure mind. So the way to purify the mind is to have this Vairagya. Iha Amutra Phalaboga Viraga means let me not have any gain here also. Let me not have a gain elsewhere also. This is how Adi Shankara defines Vairagya. He defines Viveka as Nitya Anitya Vastu Viveka. What is temporary? What is permanent? That should be known. Only one is permanent. Self is permanent. God is permanent. All others are temporary. Everything else is temporary. If that is clearly understood, that is Viveka. And Adi Shankara again defines 
here also or elsewhere also let me not have any gain as such because people in general think if they are virtuous ones they will go to heaven and in the heaven they will have many gains now adi shankar says let me not get heaven also because even if people go to heaven also they will come down to earth right strictly speaking there is no heaven there is no hell but because of all these scriptural influences people have developed the concept of heaven and hell now adi shankar says let me not get heaven also iha amutra here also there also anywhere let me not get any gain no phala bhoga iha amutra phala bhoga viraga that means let me not do anything for the sake of the gain if people do anything for the sake of the gain if they do not get that gain what do they do they again make themselves impure by their own petty calculations i repeat it again calculative mind is an impure mind always it is the decision of the person to remain in calculation and then it is the decision of the person to keep the mind impure only now adi shankar says iha amutra phala bhoga viraga that is vairagya by means of vairagya you should purify your mind you should not keep on calculating for each and every thing you may not gain anything at all at the end because everything is temporary here so first adi shankara says viveka next he says vairagya first he says develop that knowledge of what is temporary what is permanent now only permanence is god self is permanent if all other things are temporary then why the mind should calculate about all those temporary things whatever gain or whatever loss you are going to have again that is also going to be temporary if fish keeps on calculating about its gains or losses existence of fish itself is temporary only water is permanent and everything gets gets dissolved in water itself so first adi shankara says about viveka next about vairagya next how to cleanse the intellect the intellect is the one where the person's culture is hidden there right that is where from the memory recalling is happening and gradually decisions are happening there so how to purify the intellect as patanjali had mentioned dharana adi shankara mentioned shat sampatti shama dama titiksha uparati shraddha samadhana i'll not get into bigger details about these six words because again we are going to digress from the main discussion if you want to know more about these six shama dama titiksha uparati shraddha samadhana you should read the great book written by adi shankara called viveka chudamani also read one more great book written by adi shankara called upadesha sahasri also read one more book written by great adi shankara called aproksha anubhuti also read one more book written by adi shankara called atma bodha if you read these four books that is sufficient you will understand shat sampatti fully viveka chudamani upadesha sahasri aproksha anubhuti atma bodha if you still find time read one more great book written by adi shankara called prabodha sudhakara i can keep on going on telling you the list of books i have told you already enough books i hope you will be reading it so shamadama titiksha uparati shraddha samadhana these are called shat sampatti six wealthy things sampat means wealth shat sampatti means 
six wealthy things by means of which Vijnanamaya Kosha or the psychic body or the intellect itself is purified. Now how to purify the Anandamaya Kosha? As Patanjali mentioned, Dhyana, Dhyanam, Nirvishayam, Manaha. Adi Shankara says, Mumukshutva, you should have a deep desire to liberate. You should not be stuck with the temporary things. You should be able to be one with the permanent one. That is called Mumukshutva. With Viveka, if you have understood what is permanent, with Vairagya, if you have purified your mind, devoid of calculations, with Shatsampati, you have purified your own decisions. Now let there be only one decision. The one decision is to be one with the divine. That is called Mumukshatva. Adi Shankara has written one particular verse in the Viveka Chudamani about Manushyatva and Mumukshatva. Only Manushya can have Mumukshatva. Who will have the desire to liberate? Only human beings can have the desire to have liberation, to be one with the self, to be one with the divine. Because all other beings are ignorant about the divine itself, right? Only human being can understand the divine. Only human being can have the desire to be one with the divine. That is Mumukshatva. Finally, for purifying the Brahmamaya Kosha, as, Adi Shankara, as Patanjali has mentioned Samadhi, Adi Shankara mentions Ahankaranasha, the destruction of the individual ego, even the destruction of the natural ego. Natural ego is present with the human body in the form of Kundalini. I need not tell you about the individual ego. Now initially the individual ego has to be destroyed to conquer the social maya or the social illusion. Then gradually Kundalini has to be aroused to conquer the natural maya or the natural illusion. Now when this individual ego and the natural ego both are eradicated, there will be this ahankara nasha. Basically the individual ego needs to be destroyed because that is what is happening in samadhi. What is samadhi? Egolessness. What is ahankara nasha? Egolessness. Now in the method prescribed by Patanjali, there is a personal effort personal physical effort. Whereas in the methods prescribed by Adi Shankara, there is no physical effort. Viveka, Vairagya, Shatsampati, Mumukshatva, Ahankara, Nasha. These are not actually physical efforts. They are all mental efforts. So, Patanjali is a practical person. Adi Shankara is a theoretical person. I am not comparing them. Both are great. Both are great. Yoga is also great. Vedanta is also great. Both are great. One is with the practical approach. One is with the theoretical approach. Whichever approach suits you, take it, follow it. But better is, first follow Patanjali's path. Gradually embrace Shankara's path. Then go together. Let practical and theory go together. Actually, they have to be together, right? The physical practice and the mental practice, let it go together. It has to go together only, right? That is where these two are my greatest masters. And there is one more greatest master above both of them. That is Veda Vyasa. In fact, whatever Veda Vyasa had already described the same thing was later on taught by these two spiritual masters in their own styles, in their own ways. So, if you want to learn, you can keep on learning until you become one with the divine. Learning never ends, practice never ends, theory never ends, practicals never ends.
యోగ నెవర్ ఎండ్స్ వేదాంత నెవర్ ఎండ్స్ అంటిల్ ద గోల్ ఈజ్ వన్ టు బి వన్ విత్ ద డివైన్ now this is a diagram which intuitively came out of me and took me one full day to have this diagram written this diagram contains the essence of all the discussions which we have been doing till now just like in all the flow chart there is a start button there is an end button here also we have a start button and an end button start button is visible here in the yellow color instead of the end button it is the salvation button now we will start with the start as in the book alice in the wonderland the cat tells to alice to begin at the beginning and end at the end let us begin at the beginning beginning is by birth of the body udbija swedaja andaja jaravija now manuja human beings body is born in the womb by the combination of a sperm with the ovum inside the uterus so that is the birth of the body now the birth of the body has subconscious memory or involuntary actions when a child is born the child will have its own involuntary actions without knowing the child will be crying the child will be smiling the child will be crawling these are all involuntary actions and without the child's knowledge the heart is beating breathing is happening sleep is happening awakening is happening all that is because of which memory there is already a natural memory or a subconscious memory that we call it as chitta chitta basically means it is the memory of nature itself whatever the divine consciousness has been doing that has remained in memory and that memory itself is being implemented with all these bodies so that is called chitta now gradually through the chitta when the involuntary involuntary actions are happening gradually the child will become an adolescent the child will become an adult now the child is not involved in any karma as such in the sense whatever the child does it may not be knowing what it is doing let us say for example the child was sleeping on a bed and adjacent to the child both parents were sleeping imagine that way now when the child was sleeping it may be kicking the mother and the father without its own knowledge because that is a subconscious involuntary activity that is happening so the child is not involved in karma now the same child becomes an adolescent and becomes a young man and let us say the same young man becomes an adult and when the same person becomes an adult man at that time maybe his parents have become older if the same person kicks his old mother or old father now that person is purposefully doing it consciously doing it and that is where karma starts so when the sensory experiences start working that is where karma starts and that we call it as bhoga with the child the sensory experiences were not predominant gradually when the child becomes an adult initially it was stuck with the natural maya and later on it gets stuck with the social maya and it is the social maya which is much more toxic than the natural maya the example which i gave you you may think that there may not be such son who is going to kick his old father and old mother if you think that way i should say that you are still innocent <laughs> because <laughs> there are many not one or two 
there are many as such. They are ignorant and they are arrogant and they are stuck in this karma. So, when the child becomes an adult, adult involves himself or herself with the sensory experiences and that is when the bhoga starts. Bhoga means utilization of the physical body for enjoyment, for gratification, for whatever. Now that is where karma starts. Now, through the sensory experiences, gradually the conscious memory gets filled up. It is voluntary actions. People talk whatever they want to talk. People do whatever they want to do. People act whatever they want to act consciously, right? Voluntarily, right? If a child is kicking its parents, it is not knowing that it is kicking. If a son is kicking his own parents, he knows that he is kicking. Why son? Even daughter. Why should we tell only son? Why should we say only male? Even females. Both are involved in some karma. As male can be arrogant. I have seen many females also equally arrogant. I have seen daughters also equally arrogant. I have seen even daughters ill-treating their own parents. Of course, in the Indian system, it is the male which is predominant. It is the male gender which is predominant. That is part of Indian social maya, I should say. Otherwise, in many other countries, even females are as good as males in committing sins. So that way, when the sensory experiences start piling up, it is the conscious memory which is getting filled up. And now this is the voluntary actions. That is manas or mind consciously. Chitta is subconscious. Manas is conscious. Now, there is a freedom of thought and action. When this freedom of thought and action is there, how to use this freedom of thought and action is depending on the decisions. That is buddhi. Whatever may arise in the mind, whatever may be voluntarily there in the conscious memory, should it be implemented through the body or not? In the mind, there may be so many uh, thought forces coming into picture. Should they be converted into the physical activity or not? There is a decision-making process there. Now, if the decision is refined, then that is a sign of growth. Let us say the decision is not refined. Let us say this particular son is consciously kicking his old parents or troubling his old parents, insulting old parents on a daily basis, knowingly, then it is the decision taken by the person. Now, gradually it becomes a habit and character. Repeated thoughts, repeated actions are going to become habit and character. And then there is this ego or aham. And this ego will keep on doing the same thing again and again. And now that is the effect of karma. Now the effect of karma is again getting stored back in the subconscious memory. Because habit and character are subconscious. I should tell you one example. When I was in my first year engineering studies, I was staying in a small room. Adjacent to my room, there were other rooms and there was a small road. Adjacent to the road, there were some houses. In one house, one auto driver was having a family. This auto driver used to take his auto rickshaw and he used to have his livelihood by uh, using his auto rickshaw for commuters. But daily early morning, he used to come out of his house and he used to keep on abusing his children in a foul language with foul Kannada words. I had come from coastal Karnataka to Tumkur to study engineering. In fact, many of those words 
I was not understanding. All those foul words which he was using, I was not understanding. Later on, I used to ask my friends about the meaning of these words. And my friends used to laugh at me and then used to tell me the meaning also. But then, after about a month, I was observing that the same foul words which the father was using, those words even the children were using when they were playing. The father was using those words voluntarily, consciously. Now the children were continuously listening to the same foul words and it had remained in the memory of the children also. Now what has happened? One ignorant and arrogant person has spoiled the minds of his own children because of his own ego. That is where I keep on stressing about the importance of spiritual education or mental refinement. Now this is one example. I can keep on telling you about so many such examples which I have personally witnessed. If you can understand, this one example is enough for you. Now think about it. Because of the ego, because of the ahankara, when habit and character is formed, the defect of karma starts. Again, it goes back to the subconscious memory. With this case of auto driver, it is not just his children who are being spoiled. He is also spoiling himself. How? Day in and day out, he is involved in the use of such foul language. And maybe whatever foul language he is using, he is involved maybe in such activities also. And gradually, to his own memory, what is he feeding? To his own chitta, what is he feeding? Whatever he is doing, that he is feeding. Sensor experiences, conscious memory, voluntary actions, freedom of thought and action, habit and character, going back to chitta. Now this is the cycle. Cycle of karma. Now, if this happens while living, whatever I have shown in the right side, if this happens while living, after a certain age, there is a death of the body. If there is a death of the body, memory remains. Why? Memory is there in the chitta. Chitta is not in the brain. Chitta is multidimensional. Memory is there in the physical body. Memory is there in the etheric body, memory is there in the astral body, memory is there in the psychic body, memory is there in the causal body. Panchakoshas have five dimensions of memory. Memory is multidimensional. Ghost also has a memory, ancestor also has a memory, angel also has a memory. What does it mean? It means Memory is not just in the brain. Memory is in the five koshas. Actually, memory is part of nature. There are three strata of ego, right? Individual ego, natural ego and divine ego. Ego is always connected with the memory. Now, with the death of the body, there is the retention of memory. Now, when there is retention of memory, that is bandha or bondage. And because of this bondage, this auto driver who kept on using foul language in his particular life, now he has programmed his memory with the same foul language or the same foul activities. Now, that memory has retained and when this memory is retained, it becomes a roga now. Bhoga turned into a roga. Bhoga means enjoyment. Roga means disease. Cause of karma was bhoga. Result of karma is roga. Now what is roga? What is disease? The retention of memory causes the birth of one more body. The seed causes one more tree. The seed memory causes one more birth, that is rebirth, reincarnation, because 
when once the individual memory gets transferred into the natural memory nature has no other work than to recycle again to keep on producing to keep on destroying to keep on producing to keep on destroying in between maintaining that is the only functionality of natural cycle now human beings have created a system of karma by themselves by misusing the freedom given by the divine that is how law of karma takes its own course and for the karma to work it is the ignorant and arrogant human beings who are responsible for this now remember why adi shankara told about viveka vairagya shat sampatti mamukshatva whenever i discuss spirituality in a deeper aspect there are many people who keep on objecting me either directly or indirectly and telling we cannot follow all those things we cannot really live like the way you tell us to live how can it be possible then again i tell them yeah that is your choice to live in this cycle of karma right if you want to live in the cycle of karma that is your choice if adi shankara says viveka vairagya then people will say why should you have vairagya why should you have viveka why should you think about what is temporary what is permanent why should you have this iha amutra phala bhoga viraga we should be calculate you at least life is for enjoyment we should be calculate you we should have gains we should be enjoying otherwise what is the meaning of life any how life is short wrong life is not short life is a cycle which will come back physical existence may be short it may be long but you will have continuous existence in this manner you will have rebirth you will have reincarnation that will result in the birth of one more body and then punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam now the adi shankara's next sentence iha samsare khalu dussare kripaya pare pahi murare how is it possible come to the left side bottom now when the effect of karma is happening through yoga if the loss of ego can happen yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi if loss of ego can happen if loss of ego happens dissolution of memory happens because if memory has to remain it is the ego which is the cause for retention of memory right when there is loss of ego there is no memory retention there will be dissolution of memory dissolution of memory itself is salvation egolessness itself is salvation or moksha now why adi shankar told viveka vairagya shat sampatti mumukshatva why patanjali told dharana dhyana samadhi one is a practical approach one is a theoretical approach if both are together that is the greatest approach either bhakti yoga or jnana yoga or karma yoga follow at least one path of yoga or follow at least the path of vedanta or follow all the three path of yoga together or follow yoga and vedanta together that is the greatest achievement i should say to be one with the divine itself is the greatest achievement so that is one way another way let us say this is now 
जीवन मुक्ति देर इज नो विदेह मुक्ति आफ्टर एजिंग डेथ ऑफ द बॉडी लेट अस से आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ द बॉडी डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ मेमोरी हैपेंस बाय मींस ऑफ व्हाट त्यागा आइदर थ्रू योगा और थ्रू त्यागा अगेन थिंक अबाउट व्हाई आदि शंकर टोल्ड अबाउट विवेक एंड देन वैराग्य एंड देन षट संपत्ति एंड देन मुक्षित्व वन वर्स इन द भगवद गीता अंतकाले मामुस्मरण At the end, when leaving the body, let the person think about me. That also leads to salvation or liberation. What does it mean? Who will think about God while dying? Only an unselfish person, only a tiyagi, will think about God while dying. Otherwise, all other people will not think about God while dying. Right? I have told you a verse earlier. What is that verse? I am trying to recall. Vina dainni na jivanam, anaya se na maranam, dehante tavasan nidhyam, dehi me parameshwara. Only a mumukshu can ask such thing. Let me live without any dainya. Dainya means. Let me live without any. Uh, how should I translate "dainya" into English? Some words which are in Sanskrit, they don't have equivalence in English as such. Or I am also not a very proficient English speaker. The meaning of "dainya" means living a very dependent life. Vina dainya na jivanam, anaya se na maranam. Let Physical death happen effortlessly. Dehante tavasan nidhyam. When I leave the body, let me be with you. Let me merge in you. Dehi me Parameshwara. O oh God, grant that to me. That is bhakti yoga. So either by the loss of ego, that is yoga, or by the dissolution of memory, that is tiaga, moksha or salvation, is possible that way. Now this is the cycle of karma. Remember this picture. Keep on remembering this picture. Keep on thinking about the cycles which are mentioned here. Now you are the owner of your fate. You are the owner of your destiny. You are the owner of your life. You are the owner of your death. You are the owner of your liberation. Whatever questions you have about your own life, all the answers are here in this picture. Let me end today's session. See you on Monday. Until then, take care and goodbye.